This is the story of a great city, a story of achievement, of triumph over setbacks that might well have ended in defeat. The proud story of Liverpool, with its famous names and memorable aspects of life during the past 50 years. These pictures, taken in 1907, recapture the yesterdays as they appear today. The sight of our parents and grandparents celebrating their heritage with a giant pageant staged in Wavertree Park. The principal landmark was its incorporation by King John in the year 1207. And this is the way they visualize King John granting the charter that brought that town into being. The pageant on that occasion represented a long and varied mixture of historic events, which, after all, is typical of the Liverpool story. The slow growth of the town through all those early decades, the struggle of the people against their feudal lords, and this scene you may have already identified, the surrender of the castle to Prince Rupert during the Civil War, was enacted in Wavertree Park 50 years ago. Together with tableaus recalling more recent events like the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, and the final emergence of modern Liverpool. And so, to its contribution to Britain's maritime power. For today, Liverpool is the greatest outlet for the nation's exports. In any one year, more than 30,000 vessels of over 42 million net registered tonnage sail in and out of the port. Throughout the world's trade routes, wherever there are cargoes to be carried, Liverpool ships are to be found. And 15 million tons of cargo are handled in these docks annually. A far cry from the year 1715, when Thomas Steers dammed the banks of a creek on the old Customs House site to create one of the first docks of the modern world. In 1926, the Mersey Dock and Harbour Board tender Galatea, in breaking that symbolic ribbon, commemorated a historic occasion, the completion of the Gladstone Dock system, which was opened by King George V. The opening signalled the climax of the development of the port during the last century to the thriving thoroughfare it had become, stretching for seven miles from the Dingle Oil Jetty down to the open sea. The transition from sail to steam brought a pressing need for bigger and deeper docks, which led to the completion of the Gladstone Graving Dock before the First World War, capable of taking the largest vessels afloat, like the beautiful Mauritania, the old pride of the Cunard fleet and holder of the Blue Ribbon of the Atlantic from 1907 to 1929. The Mersey has always seen people come and go. Among famous names have been Sir Auckland Geddes, Lady Asquith seeing her daughter and son-in-law safely aboard at the Prince's Landing Stage, which still remains one of the greatest floating structures in the world and a tribute to Victorian engineering skill. Here was Lord baden Powell, who had founded the Boy Scout Movement at Birkenhead in 1908. Then there were these familiar faces, Jack Hulbert and Cicely Courtnage, taking a new show to New York. But the scene has not always been as happy as this. Perhaps the most tragic return of our time was one from a ship registered here in Liverpool, yet which had never entered the Mersey, the Titanic. Built at Belfast, she had sailed on her historic maiden voyage from Southampton in April 1912, crewed for the most part by Liverpool men. Their families waited and hoped and prayed. But there were few survivors to recount the tragic tale of its collision with an iceberg. 
Today, it remains only a dim memory. Although at the pierhead, rising above the river on which the Titanic never sailed, a memorial column stands. Fortunately, however, the cruelty of the sea has never deterred men from sailing in ships. And so the training of the boys who were to become the men of the Merchant Navy went on in the Indefatigable and the Conway. These proud old ships lay in the Sloin, a part of Liverpool's tradition until 1939, when they slipped inconspicuously from the Mersey under the shadow of war. The Conway, however, was to finish her days as a charred hulk in the Menai Straits. Those training ships helped to foster old seafaring traditions. But throughout the years, Liverpool has been seeking new ideas. And this pioneering spirit was especially evident in 1893 with the introduction of the first overhead railway in the world. Today, the Liverpool Overhead Railway is world famous. Although few people realize that this was the one that served as a prototype for those that were to come later. ran the length of Liverpool docks from Dingle to Seaforth near many famous landmarks. The Cotton Exchange. The Town Hall. The Royal Liver Building. The echoes of its last train rumbled down the avenues of time in 1956. A sad day for the countless fathers and sons to whom it had been a natural mecca with its grandstand views of the port at work. Today it still remains a nostalgic memory. <laughs> 